Now you see me, now you don't. Oh my gosh, that is crazy. Today we will take you behind the scenes at CES 2024 with some of the latest tech from the biggest brands and even the unusual tech from the startups. So let's get started. From the moment we walked in, it was pretty clear that AI and vehicle tech were a big focus at CES this year. We know Rivian has built an Alexa, Tesla has talked about bringing Rock into its cars, and VW showed off its latest partnership with ChatGPT inside its new ID7. So there's two ways you can actually activate ChatGPT. One is by using the voice command button. What's really great about that is if you have other people in the car talking, it's only listening to the driver. If you have questions about temperature or how to get to a destination, how many charges it takes you can just ask the vehicle to tell you and it will look into chat GPT but I really love that if you're craving a certain dish it can look up specifics of that restaurant so they use the example of hello Ida I'm I want some butter chicken there are multiple search results could you please select an entry from the list so in this example, using ChatGPT, the car's voice assistant is able to know the meal you're craving is in fact an Indian dish and will isolate the results to Indian restaurants. It'll also answer general knowledge questions while interacting in intuitive language with the driver. So behind me is a robotic charger. Do you remember when Tesla talked about doing like the snake style charger that would be something like this? Well, here they actually have it happening. One of the showstoppers at the event was definitely Xpeng's EV Toll, their electric flying car. Xpeng told us that this is not just another concept car. They've already completed all testing during the R&D validation phase and are now preparing for mass production. They've done thousands of safe flights ahead of developing this product, this being their seventh generation of flying cars. They also confirmed they'll begin pre-orders in Q4 of this year with mass production starting in 2025. What's crazy is that the entire blade mechanism of this EV actually actually folds down and collapses onto itself when it's not flying. So it becomes a standard sports car and street legal in under 60 seconds. It accommodates five passengers, can be flown in both manual or autonomous modes, and starts in at around $140,000. Just watch out for the cops hiding in the clouds. There was also the Pebble Flow, which is an all-electric travel trailer that's designed to bring you an iPhone-like experience to RVing, and it's shipping at the end of this year. It's solar powered. Yeah, so it's got integrated solar over the rooftop. It's one kilowatt, and it's also got a 45 kilowatt hour LFP battery. The California-based company says its goal is to simplify the RVing experience with features like easy tow, where range anxiety is completely eliminated, and Magic Hitch, where the Pebble positions itself and automatically hitches onto the towing vehicle and other modern one button features to eliminate all the hassles of RVing. Make sure you're subscribed because I'm working on a full video and tour of the Pebble Flow coming soon. There's a window switch. You can hit it and it oh, becomes opaque. Oh, I love these. This is a very modular design from Kia. This is one of their new concept vans. These concepts by Kia were designed for versatility as Kia hopes to change the way we buy and use cars in the future, basically allowing a single EV to serve multiple roles, whether it be a taxi, a delivery van, or even a truck by swapping modules as needed. You can actually switch out the design of your vehicle. Check this out. It's a minivan, and in a second here, it's going to actually turn into a pickup truck. Look at this. Every Everything that is visible right now, that the section that just came off, the black sections, the floor, yes. it's all batteries. So the battery stays with it. So it's a completely modular design, outside, inside, customizable. There's the van. You can see inside of it. It's sliding over here. And now we have the truck. At the event, Uber announced it would be Kia's first customer signing an agreement to use these vehicles for its ride-hailing services. All right, guys, look who I ran into at CES, and look at the find that we have right here. This is the Cybertruck tire. So remember when we were tearing down the truck and we saw the Bluetooth sensor right above the tire? So all four corners of the Cybertruck, there's a Bluetooth receiving module. And we're like, that's kind of interesting. Well. According to Goodyear, they have an integrated Bluetooth sensor in the tire. Now, I'm not talking about the TPMS sensor, but they actually have a Bluetooth sensor built into the tire now. So the tire can communicate directly with the Cybertruck. 
What does that mean? Well, tire temperature, tire pressure, uh, G-forces on the tire. I'm not sure exactly what all is going to the Cybertruck, but pretty cool to learn from Goodyear here at CES that they have that built-in sensor. Is this super unique then to see something with a Bluetooth in it? Like, has that been done before with tires? This is the first time I've seen the, a Bluetooth sensor that's actually communicating with the car in a production vehicle. We've heard about this technology, but when we took the tires off at T-Sportline and we saw that sensor, we confirmed it is legit. They have the sensor in there and the Cybertruck has a Bluetooth module on each of the four corners. So it is indeed communicating with these tires. How does that work if you were to go and swap your Cybertruck tires with another set of tires that did not have Bluetooth in it. Well, it looks like it's redundant. So you still have a TPMS sensor in the wheel. So the wheel itself has the tire pressure sensor in the wheel, and that's going to communicate at least the tire pressure to the Cybertruck. So then the tire sensor is one level beyond that, where it's giving you the temperature on the tread of the tire. It's a second backup to the pressure in the tire. So I think it's just more information, but it's a second system. I think the Cybertruck has really changed the market for a lot of vehicles. They can go really far out there, really eccentric, do things that maybe you know they wouldn't have done before. But Cybertruck has proven that it's OK to take that leap, to go a little bit wild, go a little bit crazy, be innovative and I've seen a lot more concept vehicles uh, definitely with inspiration from Cybertruck. Those are insane. Infinity brake lights. I'm not used to seeing perfect panel gaps. On Did you hear what this guy just said? Perfect? Perfect, perfect pa panel gaps on the Honda. Interesting. <laughs> Sphere CES. Never looks that good in my house. Oh my gosh. That is crazy. Barely thicker than my phone. How do you describe something like this? It's like a little bit of 3D. It is. There's it's definitely some depth. It's completely 3D, but it's not like you're wearing 3D glasses. All right, Brian, what has been your favorite thing so far? The underwater surfing thing, like the little power gizmo for cruising yeah. underwater, a little like underwater surfboard. I think I need that. I'm really digging these TVs. It's funny, I made fun of you for being excited about the yeah. TVs, and now I'm like all about these transparent I can't micro watch TV LED anymore. TVs. I need a new TV. I'm gonna head into CES Unveil. This is where I always see some of the most unique tech that's up and coming out there. Let's go check it out. It's workout clothes, and it says using your own energy. Workout clothes and energy, that's kind of my thing, so I have to check it out. Whenever you run the plastic comb through your hair, you can feel your hair adhere to the plastic comb, isn't it? Yeah. That is kind of static electricity. So whenever you move, your body can generate some static electricity. And then usually this energy is unused and wasted. However, based on some structure, you know, especially this arrangement of the so conductive is, line, is conductive it in, material. It's in, is there anything in here? Like what's inside oh, of it? That this is would just like that? a silver coated thread. Okay. So using some conductive material arrangement, and then we can, you know, concentrate this our unused energy to the one target area. So stimulating your muscles is going to help with like muscle recovery. Is it going to make me like tone up more? It's like published research. Uh, they reduced the uh, like we did some like a tester did some calf lace leg lace exercise, and then we detect using some myography, which can detect some muscle fatigue. And then they reduced uh, about 6.6% of the muscle fatigue and or during exercise. And then they kind of like improve the muscle recovery about 9.9% after exercise. It's uh, like microelectric energy. Yeah. So you cannot feel, you know, immediately. If you feel immediately and if you want to see yeah. your effect immediately, that would be the, some like a drug or some any. You know, yeah. Well, I remember those like old school devices that you put on your stomach and they would like vibrate and they were supposed to like. That is very kind of like a strong, you know, Yeah. because that is kind of like a 
strong electric stimulation is kind of different mechanism. So check this out. There's a little underwater scooter over here. All I can think about is the Cybertruck. Is this going to turn the Cybertruck into a boat and it's electric? I mean, I think they need to come together. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video and some of the cool tech at CES this year. Be sure you're subscribed as up next will get you behind the scenes with a Turkish tech company that's all about the ecosystem around your EV. They're already delivering cars, but they don't call them cars as they offer so much more. We'll sit down with its CEO and show you their stunning EVs on our next episode.